<laughs> you know how to clap it? Yeah. Okay, so look right in the lens. Okay. And you're gonna say, you the today, and then just say, take whatever action. Take four. <laughs> I gotta make sure it's right. All right, ready? Yep. Youth of today, take four. Action. Give me the 411. Man, we're ready to go. This is uh, this is the key that we cannot lose, because if we do, <laughs> it could be disaster. Don't! <laughs> Where do I put this up? I don't want to lose it. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to gonna head down south. You actually know where we're going. I, I really don't, so I'm just going to be asking you where we're going. Today's pretty chilled out. Hit the hotel, have fun in the pool. Do some pizza later on. Uh, I'm pretty excited about tonight's message. Tonight's message is uh, top 10 things successful people do to reach their dreams. And I'm really, uh, it's going to be a balance between uh, spiritual and uh, earthly. Because I, uh, I think it's pretty cool when you take your dreams, match them up with, uh, match them up with your faith, and let them walk hand in hand. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And tomorrow, we hit the slopes, baby. Hey, uh, Shane, I went and bought a Speedo. It was 20 bucks. <laughs> wow. I seriously did that one. Uh, are you tubing? Yeah. What engine was in it before? The For Allie and Paige King both. That'll work. Give me, give me something to walk off. Walk off this way. And we're here, kids. <laughs> I'm John Farrell. Sometimes she put her Emily, Thank you, workers. Let's let's give it up for you. Well, yeah, I mean, I hated, I hated, I hated school. Uh, everybody usually has at least one person in their life, a teacher that, um, that they looked up to, and I had nobody. Um, from probably my, gosh, I would say from my fifth grade year on up, I never had anyone. And you know, those formative years of your junior high years and your high school years, and you never have anybody you never see anything, you know, in education that gives you any kind of idea that anybody cares about you. Oh my gosh, I thought really that, you know, I thought it was, I hated it. No, today was your birthday! Are you kidding me? Dust the cake. Oh, today! Oh, no one will die. Is Jack in the box cool with everybody? I don't care. That's fine. Seriously going to jam today? <laughs> I don't think my wife's going to do that for me. I think she's going to end up killing me. I said that one. But the point is this. <laughs> you don't even have to know what wisdom is, but now you know wisdom is what? A woman. <laughs> what? It's something you want to have. Yeah, that was My dad, when I got done with high school, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And my dad was like, well, son, you need to go get a skilled trade. So I went to Sinclair right after high school and got a machine trade. And he died that same year, so I finished it out. He, uh, he, he had cancer. I graduated in June, and he got diagnosed just a few months later and died pretty quickly. Um, and so I finished it out because he wanted me to. And, you know, I was an 18-year-old kid, 19-year-old kid that started working in the factory as a machinist and had a big chip on my shoulder and, and uh, that didn't go, those, those were tough times in my life, real tough. Not till later on in life did I go back to college and 
it was interesting because I thought, well, maybe I'd like to be a, a lawyer. And I talked to a few people about that and met with some lawyers and a counselor from, from school said, have you ever thought about being a teacher? I was like, teacher? No, that's ridiculous. I hated school and, um, you know, being a teacher. My whole thing was money. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you'll never make money doing that. And I want to be able to provide for my family and, and have a real nice uh, living. So. so after three people who didn't know each other gave me the same advice, I was kind of like, well, maybe that's God trying to tell me something. And I applied for the education program at Miami and my entrance scores came in one point under what they had to be to get accepted in the college. They still accepted me in and I went through the program and that was a journey all on its own and when I came out the other end I didn't even know if I wanted to teach or not. But what was interesting, I didn't even realize it, is as I was running a youth group that's where I found my passion and my love for teaching. You said my name, love to be gently offended. Oh no, it's alive, it just moved. It was just... Just saw it. Gecko, leopard gecko, I had one of those. He doesn't want hell. He did bite me. He'll he'll bite you. He'll bite you. We'll probably eat dinner out here because there's plenty of nice space out there. Maybe do our devotional tonight back in there. Cool. And tomorrow morning in there. And then the pool is right here. We're going to spoon them everywhere. We're sitting and like the actors. Snap threw up. Oh hey. So I have to start with aces, and I have to get how many aces I have and lay them down, okay? But then if you don't have any, you just lie, and like if you want to say like four, then everybody goes your line because you're lying. Yeah, I told him, I said, man, you got to do something like that youth group. I mean, there is, I mean, it's a mess. I said, you need somebody in there stable to get this thing stabilized. And he, uh, he said, well, John, that's interesting to bring that up because, um, I've been praying about it, and I think you're the person that needs to take it over. And that was so far out of left field for me. I mean, there you couldn't have, you couldn't have shocked me with any greater uh, anything greater. It was uh, it was like I got hit over a hand, over the head with a hammer. I was like, "What are you talking about?" And in a lot of sense, I felt and still feel like uh, Jeremiah. I feel like Moses. I feel like completely inadequate to do to do this and. And even still today, after um, you know almost 12 years of doing it, I still feel inadequate. I don't have a clue why in the world I'm the guy that's running this youth group. But um, I don't know. I just said yes, and I've experienced a lot of blessings because I said yes. And one of those blessings has been becoming not only a teacher of of, of youth for for Christ, but also a teacher in the in the, in the secular world and teaching kids to. You know, read but mentor them, and yeah, it's a mission field for me. Write down the things you shun. I don't want to provoke you. Grant me a couple of weeks if you can change my point of view. But do not sign a salutation. I don't want this letter complete. Leave an opening ending until our paths can finally meet. When you go into a NoHo hotel room, it's a lot like your first date. You really don't know what to expect. Uh, but your hopes are really high. Uh, I went in one in the earthquake. Well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Good job, You're really. getting held up there that fucked you All right. Am I being held in contempt? Uh, Romans 11.36. What's, what's Romans 11.36 say? When my faith is weak and when, I, when, when I'm feeling shaken at the core, when I feel like I, I just my dreams are never going to be realized, when I feel like I just can't go on, I'm at my weakest, but that's actually when I'm at my strongest. David wrote it. David, the man after God's own heart, he says this, Psalm 1. Happy, blessed, blessed. Go. I learned to teach as a youth leader. I learned to teach stories from the Bible and make it apply to kids 
And I mean, by the time I was student teaching, <clears throat> by the time I was student teaching at the college level, I mean, uh, my teachers who observed me said, I mean, you're a natural at this. And, but they, it's like I told them, I had, <laughs> I had about six years of practice on high schoolers before I ever walked into a classroom full of, full of uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth graders. So my wife, who was my girlfriend then, Nina, um, she and I hadn't been dating that long. We met at church. She and I prayed about it. She, we talked about it, <clears throat> and we decided to go for it. And so I think in right 2001, I guess she and I took over the youth group. Where are we going? Well, going to fucking north. What are you gonna do today? Well, I'm just gonna feel guilt all day. <laughs> One time at church camp, <laughs> no one knows about. go down this huge hill. Snowboarding? Absolutely. Ever done it before? No. Awesome. You gonna die? Possibly. <laughs> there it was. And and there it is. Strong boys. Let's go. How you doing? Hey, there's Billy on the ground again. Where's Shane? Can you tell my mom I love her? Yeah. Yeah, go. They'll catch up. I'm gonna run you. Yeah, that's part of it. I think probably the biggest thing, if you want encouragement as a youth, as a youth minister, youth pastor, youth leader, whatever, youth worker, um, my biggest encouragement to you would be that um, be you know be real with your kids, let them know that you that you screw up, um, don't have a don't have this don't have a fortress around you. Um, if you if you slip up and, and screw up and do something, own it and, and apologize and uh, let them know that it's okay to screw up and, and let them know that it's all right because you are going to mess up. And I think that's probably what's kept me in the game so long is I don't live in such a fishbowl uh, and I haven't put the pressure on myself to be perfect. Um, I've cussed in front of my youth before. Um, I've treated my wife bad in front of my, in front of, I've been, treated my wife bad in front of my youth. Um, I've said some off color stuff. I've made people mad. I've hurt people's feelings. And every time I do it, I just do the thing that I expect um, probably has kept me in the game. And that's apologize and move on and, and, and uh, learn from it. Christians do have a certain uh, way about them. and They should have a hope within them. They should have a light and a joy. And they should have, um, they should have growth and they should have fruit. And they should, they should be constantly, constantly bettering themselves as a Christian. And the thing is, is that what I've noticed, and I think the biggest problem is that you cannot tell the difference between a Christian and non-Christian because they both, um, and not all of them are like this, but but those who are quote Christians, they have uh, they have no hope. They look as miserable as the person lost next to them. They, uh, you can, if you if you did not if you did not know if they didn't come out and tell you, well, you know I love Jesus. I'm a believer. I'm born again. You know if they didn't tell you that, there would be zero evidence of that. Uh, and I think. I think we need a lot less, uh, a lot less pretenders, and more more kids go out there and be bold and, and take risk. And, and being a Christian is, is taking a risk because the world hates righteousness, and they hate righteous kids. They hate kids that hate sin. Oh, 
Whoa. Give me a wrap up yeah, here. What's going on? A whole lot of stuff. They'll probably get me fired. You got it, Claire. Come on. Woo! Get it, Claire. One more, one more. I can't get it. Do that. What? What are you doing? Please don't die. Come on. I can take a class full of kids, and uh, I can tell you the kids who are who have their parents involved in their in their academics, and their and more importantly in their lives. Spending time with them, the quality time with them, um, one on one is huge. But my wife and I have always have always said when we're done being youth leaders, we're going to write a book, and it's called uh, a book to parents raising teenagers. And and I got to tell you, the number one mistake parents make is they are afraid for some reason. They're afraid to punish their kids when they're wrong, and they're totally uh, afraid to uh, not be their friend. It's like a, it's like parents just want to be their kids' friends, and uh, they don't want to be their parents. And I've seen it ruin every time. I've never seen it work one time. And I try to tell them. And I try to tell teenage. I try to tell other youth leaders this: It's not your job to be your your youth's friend. It's your job to be their leader and their mentor. Um, and when I say friend, I'm not talking about uh, being friendly to them and loving them. Because I'll tell you this right now, they got plenty of friends. What they need, what they need is someone they can respect, that they can love, that they can follow. That's what they need. And so parents, just for some reason, always want to be friends when they don't want to be the person to say no. Are you ruining his stuff? No. Shh. Are you capturing this on camera? Don't capture it. Unfortunately. On camera. <laughs> Teenagers, Allison, and I quote, said, Alley Cat. No, you gotta get her. You can't quote somebody else's quote unless you cite Well, he's cite interviewing the source. us right now, not Alley Cat. I am uh, saying. Oh, is this for real? Should I go away? I said, <laughs> Alley Cat, and I quote her, yes. I'm quoting her. She said that it was the best activity ever. Ever. That's what she said. Okay. What'd you think of the youth activity last night? Oh. Uh, what? <laughs> she didn't come to our activity. <laughs> Huh? Because she's not in our class. You're not in my class? Yeah. No. I'll go get somebody that was in my class. <laughs> right. Kimberly, Kimberly was in our class. She was there. Am I doing it right? I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing it right. But I haven't fixed every kid. I don't even know if I've made a single kid better. But I can tell you this. It's made me better. That's it. Guys, in the event of severe weather, don't, don't, don't trust it. Don't trust it. It doesn't matter what he says. Even if you see it for yourself, don't, don't trust it. Still. <laughs> Go. My name is Rusty Shackford, and welcome to another brand new episode of, of Quacky Church Adventures. Today we just got off from church camp. What a lovely sight, my friends, with all these wonderful, beautiful people. Okay, well, maybe not this guy right here, but we're good. But, um, you know, so we've got a lot of good people today, and two right love in others' arms. I think your dad missed you. I know he probably did. You need to go say hi to him. I will as soon as I'm done with this interview, lady. Back off. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, this is Jay. This is Rusty Shackford signing off. I have to go to my dad.
to be a fantastic youth leader, one must first be super cool and stylish. Like with your clothing, of course. So, um, the Outer Banks hat, okay, and you wear that backwards, of course, because that's in style. Um, the wedding rings, um, I mean, you can get these about anywhere. This is my dad's, but he's, he's dead now, so, so I guess he won't be needing it. Um, and like ankle socks. You don't want to wear like socks that are too high up. You want to wear ankle socks. Um, because uh, what happens is you, if you wear socks that are too high up all the time, it rips off your hair over a period of time and then you don't look manly at all when you're like playing events like this. People are like, oh wow, he's only got hair from his shins up. Um, you also need pockets in your um, like cargo pant shorts and, you, and that way you can keep um, your Bible your Bible in there, or tracks to give out to people that might not know God. Where's um, yours? Where's my what? W what you keep in your pocket. Your Bible oh, and my Bible. Well, my Bible and my, um, and my tracks, I'm playing them. Uh, we play football right now, so I had to put them away, or else they would be strewn all over the, all over the field. And talk a lot about sex. Kids love to talk about sex. And end times. And is there sex in the end times? So, that's it.